Hi everyone, I've got a question for you. Why does the Bible say that we have to fear God? This is also a question that we received from some of you. And we need to answer it in the same way that we answer all the questions that we have. We have to look at scripture to answer the question. And it is an interesting question because why does the Bible say that we have to fear God when it also says in 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but one of power, love, and sound judgment. And Isaiah 41 verse 10 says, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will hold on to you with my righteous right hand. So, on the one hand, the Bible says that we have to fear God. On the other, it says we don't have to fear. So, does the Bible then not contradict itself? Well, let's take a closer look. Alright, now the Bible uses the word fear in reverence to God around 300 times. And people don't understand this because it says we have to fear God, but on the other hand, it says we have to love God. For example, Mark 12 verse 30 says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. So, which is it? Love God or fear God? When it comes to love, the Bible also says this, 1 John 4 verse 18, there is no fear in love. Instead, perfect love drives out fear because fear involves punishment. So the one who fears is not complete in love. Well, no, this just makes it even more complicated, doesn't it? A little bit confusing, especially if your first language is not English. Well, before we continue, let's just look at one verse that says that we have to fear God. The Psalm 33 verse 8, let the whole earth Fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of Him. Now you got to understand that fearing is understanding and respecting, knowing who God really is. And when you think about Him, when you pray to Him, you do so with awe. Do you have awe for God? If you don't, then you are not wise. Proverbs 9 verse 10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. A lot of people out there in the world, they try to bring God Almighty down to their level. But you can't do that. Even if you could try to fit Him into your small three-pound brain, it would change everything for you. And I mean to really understand Him. If you could fully understand all His attributes, that God is infinite, immutable, self-sufficient, omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, that God is full of perfect wisdom, that He is faithful, never changing, that He is always good, just, and His mercy has no end, because He is gracious and full of unconditional perfect love. And very important, God is holy, and He is the light of the world. God is glorious. Now, if you could just for a moment understand all of this, you would have an immense amount of respect, awe for God, for who He is. And it will change everything. The way you think about Him, the way you pray, the way you talk to Him. The Psalm 111 verse 10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow His instructions have good insight. His praise endures forever. Now what you need to understand is that fearing God and loving God goes hand in hand. It's always been this way, even back in the Old Testament. Deuteronomy 10 verse 12. And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God ask of you except to fear the Lord your God by walking in all His ways, to love Him and to worship the Lord your God with all your heart? and all your soul. Is it starting to make sense now? Fearing God is understanding who He really is, respecting Him. But it is also more than that. It is also fearing God's judgment on sin, understanding how holy He is and that He hates sin. Proverbs 6 verse 16 says, The Lord hates six things. In fact, seven are detestable to Him. Arrogant eyes, 
a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that plots wicked schemes, feet eager to run to evil, a lying witness who gives false testimony, and one who stirs up trouble among brothers. God is light, He is perfect, He is holy. And if He is righteous, then He will also hate unrighteousness, darkness, evil. And if you love God, then you have been changed and His Spirit is in you. And therefore you will also hate the darkness. You will also hate sin. You will hate evil. Proverbs 8 verse 13 says, The fear of the Lord is hatred of evil, pride and arrogance, and the way of evil and perverted speech I hate. Now, most parents will understand this. Your children need to fear you, respect you, in the sense of understanding and submitting to your authority as a parent. Because you know better, right? They're still young, they don't know the world. And you need to teach them right from wrong. And if they disobey, you need to discipline them. And so they will need to expect this from you. And so if you're a child and you don't listen to your parents, you will be disciplined. Why? Because your parents love you. And in the same way, God the Father will discipline us because He loves us. And that is why we fear Him. We respect His authority over us because He knows best. Hebrews 12 verse 5 says, And have you completely forgotten this word of encouragement that addresses you as a father addresses his son? It says, My son, do not make light of the Lord's discipline and do not lose heart when He rebukes you. Because the Lord disciplines the one He loves, and He chastens everyone He accepts as His Son. And then Revelation 3 verse 19 says, As many as I love, I rebuke and discipline, so be zealous and repent. Ask yourself this, after you have sinned against God, do you feel guilty? Do you feel wrong? Do you feel sinful, dirty? Do you have tears of regret? because you have sinned against the holy God? Or do you just shrug it off as if it's nothing? And right before your fleshly nature wants to sin, do you stop yourself because of your fear and love for God? Or do you just go ahead with it because you don't really fear and love God? Proverbs 14 verse 27 says, The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life that one may turn away from the snares of death. You know, my parents and their parents, they had great respect for God. That generation, they had real respect for God Almighty. And today we think too little of God. Oh, God is my buddy. He's my pal. He's okay. He understands my sinful lifestyle. He's fine with it. Have you heard people talking like that? They don't even realize that they are making everything about themselves. It's not about God for them. Their life, their money, their work, their religion. Me, me, me. God is not just your buddy. You can't bring Him down to your level. He's not a genie either who just, well, if, if you just wish something, God has to jump. No, He is God Almighty who created everything with just His will. Galatians 6 verse 7 says, Don't be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a person sows, he will also reap. Because the one who sows to his flesh will reap destruction from the flesh. But the one who sows to the Spirit will reap eternal life from the Spirit. When you sin, you are sinning against a holy God. And yes, God is called our friend. But you need to understand what that really means. God can only be called your friend when you truly understand who He is, when you love Him and fear Him. The Psalm 25 verse 14 says, The friendship of the Lord is for those who fear Him, and He makes known to them His covenant. You see, you can only call God your friend when you truly fear and respect His authority over you as Lord, as God. You are just a human. I am just a human. He is God Almighty, and we have to submit to Him. And if you do, then you will obey His word. That is what it means to be a true friend of God. John 15 verse 12 says, This is my command. Love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. 
Now, please understand, yes, we should fear God, respect Him, but we shouldn't be afraid of Him because He loves us. But fearing God means that we submit to His authority over us as God and that we should obey Him and worship Him with great wonder, awe, an immense amount of respect for who He is. Because there is none like Him. There are no other God except the one who always was, who is, and will always be. Let me give you a picture of His majesty, of Him, of God on His throne. Revelation 4 verse 2, Immediately I was in the Spirit, and there was a throne in the heaven, and someone was seated on it. The one seated there had the appearance of jasper and carnelian stone, a rainbow that had the appearance of an emerald surrounded the throne. Around the throne were 24 thrones, and on the thrones sat 24 elders dressed in white clothes with golden crowns on their heads. Flashes of lightning and rumblings and peals of thunder came from the throne. Seven fiery torches were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Something like a sea of glass, similar to crystal, was also before the throne. Four living creatures covered with eyes in front and in back were around the throne on each side. The first living creature was like a lion. The second living creature was like an ox. The third living creature had a face like a man. And the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. Each of the four living creatures had six wings. They were covered with eyes around and inside. Day and night they never stopped saying, Holy, 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 Lord God, the Almighty, who was, who is, and who is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to the one seated on the throne, the one who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before the one seated on the throne and worship the one who lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns before the throne and say, Our Lord and God, you are worthy to receive glory and honor and power because you have created all things and by your will they exist and were created. Now ask yourself, do you fear God Almighty? If you don't, then you won't really care about living righteously either. 2 Corinthians 7 verse 1 says, So then, dear friends, since we have these promises, let us cleanse ourselves from every impurity of the flesh and spirit, bringing holiness to completion in the fear of God. Yes, God is love. He's being preached by the church over and over and over and is good because it is true. But God is also holy and righteous. That is not being preached by the church across the world. Enough. People need to understand what it means to be a real Christian, to live righteously, to live holy because God is holy. You know, there will be a time when His grace runs out. There will be a time when you die. Where will you go? Will you go to heaven? Or will you go to hell? My hope is that you will go to Christ. My hope is that you take your relationship with God seriously and that you start to live holy. If you want to be sure about your salvation, then please, Watch one of these videos here and I'll see you there. And always remember, God does love you and I love you too. Bye. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee.